Hello, welcome to Playfully Orange, our conversations about arts and culture here in Central Florida. And my guest today is Candy Cole. Welcome, Candy. Good afternoon. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Candy, you are with Makers. Maker, Maker. <laughs> What's the Maker? What? Um, the organization is called the Maker Effect Foundation. That's and it. Uh, our largest program that most people are familiar with is Maker Fair Orlando. Right. Which is a combination of science, innovation, arts, uh, lots of things. Exactly. Tell us how you came to this. Were you a um, maker from when you were a kid? Were you always creating things? My husband was one of those people. He was one of those people that always got in trouble for taking his toys apart to figure out how they worked. Um, and what really hit us both was when we had children here and they got a little bit, you know, they're toddlers, two, three, four, five, and a toy breaks and they instantly want to go buy a new one. And we're like, <laughs> no, that's not how this works. So now we started working with our kids. We wanted, didn't want them to be brats. We wanted them to, you know, work for their things, but also, okay, now you have this broken thing that we can't do anything with, but maybe you can repurpose it. Maybe you can turn it into something else. So it was more about, that's kind of how it started. Um, and then we took my son to uh, Bay Area Maker Fair in San Francisco, where it all, where the maker movement kind of began, which is a huge event when he was 10 or 11. And my son said, this is absolutely amazing. We need to do this in Orlando. And there it was. And so we had our first event uh, 10 years ago at the Central Florida Fairgrounds. It was pretty small. Um, we had all different kinds of creatives. We had digital art and lots of 3D printers and robotics and a little bit of everything. It was a pretty small event that first year. And we had been trying to, like, people aren't going to know what this is. So we need to partner with somebody to make this work. But And we thought this would fit really well with the Orlando Science Center. So how can we? But they didn't want to really talk to us. They didn't know what a maker was or... They didn't know who we were at the time. So we invited them to attend and they had a big booth and they had a phenomenal time. So at the end of the day, they said, Ooh, okay, now we get it. Let's talk about this. And so we've had a phenomenal partnership with the Orlando Science Center ever since. Matter of fact, for three years, we moved the event to the Science Center, but then outgrew their building. And then we moved back to the fairgrounds, kind of overtook the place. But the thing about this is, and it's really hard to describe until you've seen it, but we want to give people, everybody, access to the tools, knowledge, and resources they need to bring their ideas to life. Because people who are creative, we've gotten a lot of great feedback over the years, people who are creative, whether you're an accountant or a banker or a chef or work in a restaurant or wherever, people who are creative tend to be better problem solvers in their day jobs, whether you're an artist or not, you don't have to work as an artist to have a creative outlet or creative hobby of some kind. And there's a lot of folks who would be really interested in woodworking, but don't have access to those tools. And so bringing this community together is a great way to connect people with resources that can help them bring their ideas to life. Um, and you know, I'm sure having a creative outlet could be good for your mental health. It can help you have an outlet for the stresses in your life and just Creativity is a skill too. It's not something you either are or you aren't. It's a skill that you can work on and get better at. And uh, that's one of the things that we really want to foster. Does that make sense? Yes. Do you, um, do you think your child was able to articulate why he said we should have one of these? Um, at the time, I really don't think so. I think he was just... This is fun. Overstimulated, like, wow, we have large cupcakes driving around like they're little cars and we have just you know people doing live painting and people singing and we have singing robots and what is all of this you know it was it was just overwhelming for him he said this is so much incredible things that all of it is created by normal people just like you and me anybody could do this and that's one of the things that we wanted to to instill here in Central Florida, we wanted our, we have so many incredible, incredibly talented people here. And um, we wanted to kind of give them a place to, to show off what they're making and share what they're learning with everybody else because that's what inspires people to try something new. It is, suddenly strikes me that it's kind of like a people's version of a world's fair or world's exposition. Exactly. A you know, hundred years ago, 
those would be places where you would go, like the, the Great White City of Chicago, I think 1900 around then. Like, wow, electricity, like yeah. uh, different inventions kind of thing on a big scale and national and international kind of thing. But what, what I'm hearing uh, your son's reaction and knowing what the Maker Faire is, it's kind of like the people's version of that. Wow, someone else like me has created something that's wow, interesting, cool. Exactly. And the coolest thing for me, and it was, I think it happened um, 2013, 2014. It was one of our earlier events. And when the, when the, when the, it was, I really started this when it was kind of my husband's passion. But what really made it for me was when I first saw we were at an event, it was when we were at the Science Center, a, like a teenager. 15, 16 year old young man having a conversation with someone that he didn't know. He had just met them there. It was a gentleman who was probably in his seventies, could have been a grandparent, but I know they were unrelated. They didn't know each other, but they were having a conversation as if they were friends. The demographics didn't matter. The age didn't matter. Your socioeconomic background did not matter. These human beings from very different worlds had an instant connection and could talk to each other about an incredible project as if they were friends. And that, really, really spoke to me. And I love seeing the unintended collaborations, the accidental things, the electronics person who hooks up with someone who sews, and now you have clothing that lights up and th those kind of things, which I think is amazing. You mentioned a great partnership with the Science Center. Are there other of our arts and cultural organizations that you've connected with, partnered with? Absolutely. Um, you know, over the years, and I love that the arts and culture community here is is really like a big family. Um, I know different times we've had earlier on, we were having some issues with insurance because what's a maker fair and what are makers and why should we insure this event? So I talked to Orlando Fringe and some other organizations who really helped me some of those through some of those challenges. Um, and Opera Orlando is another one that's been a phenomenal partner. Um, they come and support all of our events and it's a really great way also to introduce, to and help them increase their audience. and get people hooked on this who had no idea how really amazing it is. Um, we've worked with some like, initially we had some earlier conversations with the, the Creality School of Art and sometimes they come, sometimes they don't. It kind of depends on these are all small organizations. Sometimes they have the resources and sometimes they don't, but um, lots of local artists, whether whatever your passion is and other just makers all over the place. Um, it's been a pretty amazing thing and it's a great community here. What well, has been, a highlight of your time here at a maker fair oh my goodness one of my favorites was from uh 2019 was our was a really really big event for us and uh we had the largest combat robot competition in the country at the time outside of the battlebots tv show ours is still the largest combat robot event the cool thing about this, you think combat robots, fighting robots, maybe not my thing, but we had robot fights with these huge fighting robots going on and they're very loud. At the same time, we had Opera Orlando performing inside on the stage. So people were literally listening to opera, watching combat robots, and a couple people in the audience were like, how did they plan this? This is amazing. What a cool combination it was to get completely different audiences in for both of those events. and that was one of the most interesting images and the people's reaction to that was really cool for me. Nice. And has there been someone or some group of people that have been just so incredibly outside the box with what they made? Um, there are a lot. I find a lot of young people, a lot of students, a lot of teenagers who are they're not really afraid to try something new. You know, as we get older, we become kind of self-conscious and kind of afraid of what other people are going to think. But I've seen some young people do some really amazing things in some school groups. Just really, we're going to build boats out of aluminum foil and see how many pennies we can stack on them. And it's just a re really great ways to inspire guests and attendees and everyone else to tap into their, their creative side. I really love seeing somebody make something that inspires someone else to try something. Um, because a lot of people look at this amazing work of art and say, oh, wow, I could never do that. That's really great, but I could never do that. And what we want is for someone to look at that and say, that's an amazing thing and have the artist right there to say, 
you know what, here's how I got started. Here's how you can do something like this. Figure out what you're passionate about. And that's one of the things that I really, really love. There's so many of those. Great. Well, Candy, thank you for taking the inspiration from uh, your child and your husband's um, fixity yeah. partiness and creating a place where creativity is um, welcome and encouraged. We appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching this issue of Playfully Orange. I also, every Thursday, talk to somebody about arts and culture in Central Florida. And on Tuesdays, Diverse Orange talk about um, diversity here in Central Florida. Thanks, everyone. Bye.